Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixel Perfect, and today we're going to create a fun window reflection effect in Photoshop and put a glass between the subject and the cameraman or camera woman. We will add lighting, glare, color to bring everything together. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop, and if you wish to go ahead and download the photos shown in this video and follow along, you know what to do. Check the links in the description. First of all, let's bring in the reflection. So here in my finder, I have this photo. You can download it. Let's drag it and drop it onto this. I clicked it from my hotel room in Dubai. Let's make it larger, hit enter or return, and let's blur it a little bit. Since the background is out of focus, it is a shallow depth of field. So the reflection should also be out of focus. So let's go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian Blur. This is already a smart object, so that's not a worry. And let's set it to about 20 for now. We can always increase or decrease it later. Hit OK. Now let's press Ctrl or Command T. Hit OK. And then resize it accordingly. I'm going to make it larger. Let's keep it right about here. Hit Enter or Return. And then change the blend mode from normal to, you know what? Screen, because screen is the blend mode which brightens. Now, there are a couple issues right here. First of all, whenever you see a reflection, it should be inverted. I know there's not anyone going to be fact checking this, but still, it's best if we invert it. Press Ctrl or Command T, right? Hit OK again, right click on it, and then go to Flip Horizontal. And I'm going to keep it right about there. That looks nice. Hit Enter or Return. This is looking fantastic so far, but these details right here at the bottom can be distracting. So let's take that away. Create a mask by clicking on the mask button. Take the gradient tool here and let us pick a gradient from black to white. This one. And we're going to create a gradient like so. But this is not what I wanted. So let's choose a linear gradient and then play with this. This looks pretty good. By the way, you can hold the shift key. That way, it will be a straight line. So here's what you do. Instead of holding the shift key first, just click here, just draw the gradient, however you want it to draw it. And then when you're holding one of the points, only after you have started holding, like I have started to hold right now, I'm continuing to hold, then you press the shift key so that it's a straight line. Again, I left the shift key, I'm holding again, and as you're holding, then you hold the shift key to work with this. So we're going to keep it this way for now. Now it is time for us to take away the extreme dark areas. And for that, we're going to use our favorite curves. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. And whatever we do inside of the curves, it's going to affect everything. We don't want that. We only want it to affect the reflection. Let's name this layer reflection. Let's get back to the curves. Click here to open up the properties and make the darks darker by taking the slider on the left to the right. Again, it's affecting everything. We want it to affect just the reflection. For it, let's click on this button. This creates a clipping mask. Now let's play with it. This is fine. We're getting more details on the subject. Now the highlights can be way too high right here. You can also reduce that by taking the point on the right hand side and taking it slightly down. This goes a long way. Let's have a look. This is without it. A lot of details are going away and this is with it it's getting better. Now, since the reflection is warm, we need to make the subject warm as well. And one of the easiest ways to do it is selecting the subject layer, or in this case, the background layer. Make a copy by pressing Ctrl or Command J and let us name this layer warm and go to filter, convert for smart filters. Where did that go? There you go. So that whatever filter you apply, you can change the stuff later. Hit OK and then go to filter. You guessed it, right? Camera Raw Filter, one of my favorite filters. By the way, I'm building a very detailed course and masterclass on just Camera Raw, covering every little detail, starting with every minute things. And I've already created the first lesson. It is available for our Piximperfect Pro members. So if you're interested, check out Piximperfect Pro if you want to master Photoshop from start to finish and beyond and cover every little detail, every little update in depth. We have over 100 lessons. The support is amazing. More than 200 or probably 300 practice projects that you can use and follow along with and learn with it. Everything is designed to take you from start to finish, leaving no details behind. Even if you choose not to get it, that's up to you. I highly recommend that you just check out the website, piximperfect.com. I would highly appreciate that. Thank you so much. See how easy it is to make it warmer? In the color module, just increase the temperature so that she gets warmer. Temperature, right? So like this, but as we do increase the temperature, the image gets a lot brighter. So let's go to lighting and decrease the exposure to balance that. Now it's getting a bit greenish. So let's go back to color and increase the tint slightly 
like so. You can also try other stuff like playing with shadows and see how that reacts, playing with highlights, let's slightly increase it, and playing with the other settings. Maybe not required for this example, let's keep it that way. Let's do a test run, hit OK. Oh my gosh, this got so much better. So here's the before. As you can see, it's not just coming together. And here is the after. Everything is coming together so nicely. Now windows can be usually tinted and the reflections may not be that much. So you can always come to the reflection layer and decrease the opacity. So in this case, I'm going to set it to about 70. How does that feel? Or 80. 80 looks nicer for this example. Now I don't like the little weird light right there. So Control or Command T again, and we will move it slightly just a little bit like so. And this works pretty good. Now, if you want to add a little more finishing touch, here is the brightest spot of light right here, which is the sun. So it should add some glare to the photo as well. So let's create it with the topmost layer selected. Let's create a brand new layer at the top by clicking on this button. Let's select the gradient tool and let us draw a color to transparent gradient here. So I'm gonna choose this gradient. We can always change the colors later. And I'm gonna draw a gradient from here like so. We want a radial gradient, so let's click on this to make sure it's a radial gradient. In the later versions of Photoshop, you also want to make sure that the gradient is selected, not the classic one, so that you can change this stuff later. Now for the middle color, we will choose yellow, bright yellow, something like so. Hit OK. And as it fades, we want red or orange color, like so, something like that. This is fine. And you can move it wherever you want. Now keep in mind, whatever it is doing, it should be brightening stuff because this is light, right? So change the blend mode from normal to screen so that it only brightens. So I'm going to place it right about here or there up to you or there and adjust it. This creates a nice glow. Now, if you want a little more pop on top of that, you can make a copy of this by pressing Ctrl or Command J and change the blend mode of that to color dodge. Oh my gosh, that bright spot. Now adjust it and decrease the fill here. This creates a nice highlight spark there, which is really good. So at about 10% is nice and you can move this around as well. See what works best for you. This is pretty fantastic or keep it here. I'm going to leave that to you. So they have a nice spot of shine as well. And this glares there as well. If you wanted to do an additional retouching, finishing touch, for example, here I can see there's a lot of shiny spots on the subject. If you wanted to remove that just above the warm layer, we're going to create a solid color adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color. Pick a very bright skin color, something like so. Hit OK. You can always change the stuff later. Change the blend mode from normal to multiply. And it already goes away, but we need to do some adjustments. By the way, let's turn off the reflection and all of the flare and everything. Now double click on the right hand side of the layer. We only wanted it in the bright spots. So take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. Only keep it in the bright spots. But this is very harsh as you can see. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and take it apart like so. This takes it away. Hit OK once you're satisfied. And we didn't want it in every area. So select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I to invert it. Take the brush with white as the foreground color and a soft round brush. Just paint over the areas where you need it. That's it. And then decrease the opacity. We don't want to completely take it away. So 68 is nice. And now you can turn on everything. There you go. So that helps. Here's the before. As you can see, all the shiny spots, here is the after. That takes that away. Actually, I would go even lower to maybe 50% and this looks nicer. So there you go. That's how to add a reflective window effect in Photoshop. The concept here is pretty simple. You add that reflective material and then change the blend mode to screen. Everything after that was just adjustments according to what we needed. That was it. And if you want to master the concepts behind all of these and uncover and learn every tool and adjustment in detail, I highly recommend that you check out Piximperfect Pro only on Piximperfect.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. I've been to the top of Mount Everest. I've sailed the seven seas. I've shared the stage with all the best. A lot of good it did for me.